Hi, I'm Peter Stokowski. I'm one of the uh, technical staff at Tesora Inc. And I'll be talking today on Oracle Databases and OpenStack Trove. First, a little bit of uh, background information. For those of you who don't know, uh, Trove is the OpenStack database module. Pretty much its uh, goal is to create database as a service for, uh, for cloud formations. And Tesora, we are the Trove company. Uh, pretty much we are, uh, our goal is to bring Trove to the enterprise. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about the architecture of Trove uh, as it relates to uh, OpenStack. Um, basically, one of the things to realize is that we sit on top of a whole bunch of other modules. So you'll see on the slide, there's Keystone, Neutron, uh, Nova, Glance, Cinder Swift. These things are all a core part of Trove that we leverage. So basically what happens when you run a Trove create command or through the, through the Horizon dashboard, if you uh, click on create a Trove instance, uh, we will pull an image from Glance, we will spin up that image on Nova, and then we will talk to a guest agent which is built into the image, and that guest agent will then, according to the instructions, according to the configuration, will uh, provision a database instance uh, for the user. Now, as an, open, as an open source project, OpenStack is obviously very tightly uh, involved in the, the entire open source community. So a lot of the databases that Trove supports are open source databases. MySQL, uh, Postgres, also NoSQL type databases like Cassandra, uh, Redis, and, and others. So of course, uh, one of the first questions you have is, well, why would why would Trove as a community, or OpenStack as a community, why would we be interested in supporting a commercial, proprietary database? Well, it's pretty easy to find the answer to that if you go to the internet, take a look at many sites, one of them, dbengines.com, and uh, you'll find out very quickly that Oracle is still a huge player in the database market. Lots of enterprises are using Oracle to store their mission-critical data. And in order for Trove to be uh, a very comprehensive product, we need to be able to provision these type of databases as well. Now, of course, there are challenges when dealing with proprietary databases. Uh, in the open source community, if you want to make some sort of change that you, know, you want to have Trove do something that the database doesn't support, you can actually uh, su make suggestions to the open source community, and they are very likely to incorporate those suggestions. On the other hand, proprietary databases make it a little more difficult. If Oracle doesn't Oh, that's interfering? Okay. I'll try not to move. How's that? <laughs> okay, so there are some other, uh, some challenges that result that from working with proprietary databases. Some of the things that uh, we've come across are... Hmm? I'll just hold it away. Okay. Sure. I'll keep going. Um, some of the things we ran across would be things like data store uh, specific parameters. Um, a lot of these proprietary databases have a lot of configuration parameters, and that controls how the instance is set up. And there are, you know, there there are challenges in getting that information down to our guest agent. In fact, one of the uh, design sessions that we're going to be having at the summit uh, at this point is how to best architect this. Other, interest, uh, other things that we had to do with uh, Oracle is the fact that the image of the Oracle database is much larger than something like MySQL, uh, on the order of five or six times larger. So that provided challenges in terms of timing and things like that. And of course, uh, different architectures don't map onto the Trove model in quite the same way. Uh, for example, MySQL has databases and users. Uh, Oracle has logins and users and schemas and databases and it's, uh, it can be a bit of a challenge to come up with uh, an interface that's intuitive to both MySQL users and Oracle users. So I guess one of the other questions is why choose 11G? Uh, again, one of the uh, easiest ways is to uh, go onto the internet and find out what did Oracle do with their own uh, cloud offering. 
Of course, 11G is one of the databases that they support, so we figured that's a good choice. So what's the current state of the project? Well, you can create and delete instances, list them, show them. You can create users and databases, and you can uh, set up a root access to them as well. Now, another one of the offerings that Oracle has is 12C. It's uh, what they describe as a multi-tenant database. And its architecture is a little bit different than other databases where you, you have a machine, you install the, the database and configure it. It, will, it runs on its own set of servers. It actually is, uh, you could argue that it's uh, Oracle's answer to database as a service. You can create container databases and have pluggable databases inside that and Oracle will, will manage all that for you. So this, this once again doesn't really fit into the, the whole Trove model of spinning up a Nova instance and installing, you know, having the software on it and running it there. Typically this software will already be installed somewhere and it will be managed uh, uh, by a group. So how did we, how did we uh, deal with that issue? What we decided to do is have uh, Trove start up a small Nova instance and we put the guest agent is basically a, a proxy to this Oracle database. It's what we call a remote agent. And so what happens when you do a Trove create, it won't actually set up the database since that already exists. It will set up a little controller as it were and that controller will then talk to the database and set up databases, users, and things like that for you. So there were some challenges with 12C as well. Uh, one of the first ones, of course, is that you're pointing to an external database. Uh, it has to know, you know, Trove needs to know where that thing is. As I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of configuration parameters that uh, a lot of these databases require, and Trove really doesn't handle that 100% uh, at the moment. So the way we solve this issue at, at, at present is to use configuration groups, which Trove does support. Some of these connection parameters are, are bundled up in these configuration groups, and they're passed down, and that's how Trove knows how to talk to the, uh, to the 12C instance. There's other issues like state management. We're talking to an external process, again, that we don't really control. We have to keep things in, in sync. There's a host DB failure detection and, and a bunch of other things. Um, one other thing that's uh, kind of important to note too is that not all things map the same onto, uh, onto the Trove model. Things like resizing instance uh, doesn't make sense in this case because normally what we do is we would you know, shut down the database, spin up a new Nova instance with a larger compute power, let's say, or more memory, and then start the database up again. Well, we don't have that option in this case. Whatever, whatever machine that 12C is running on, that's what you get. Okay. So what's the current state of, uh, of the Trove project uh, in terms of Oracle 12C? Similar to 11G, uh, we can create instances, delete them, list them, run show on them. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, you can, uh, it supports configuration groups, and you can create users on it. So where do we go from here? With Oracle 11G, uh, we'll need to add user access. We'll, uh, uh, it would be great if we had backup restore capabilities. For 12C, uh, it's a little more difficult sometimes to understand. It's, again, this is a, a, a database instance that's being managed outside of Trove, so it doesn't make sense to do backups. Um, this may be a point where we need to get some feedback from operators and, and customers or people who are actually uh, using 12C in production and say, does this, does this make sense for Trove to do? And if it does, well, we can implement it. Other things which probably do make sense are you know, how to create the container database, how to clone one of these pluggable databases within a container or how to move it across containers, you know, so do some balancing, uh, state management, and maybe even things like provisioning data guard. So uh, this was just a very quick overview of, uh, of the implementation that Tesor has made for, uh, for Oracle databases on Trove. If you would like some more information, we are, uh, there's a, a booth at, uh, here at the summit. It's T45. There's also a demo theater presentation, uh, what's new in our platform. That'll be uh, tomorrow at 1.15 p.m. Plus, there's plenty of resources on the web. Uh, you, know, there's, uh, you can see where the source is. You can uh, take a look and, and download, download the installable packages from Tesora's website. 
Um, we're also available if you have any questions and you want to find uh, some response outside the summit uh, quickly. IRC is probably the, the best way to go about that and uh, it'll either be OpenStack, Trove or Tesora. Thank you.